Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are going to be beginning working on my newest project car, my new 1974 MGB. You guys saw a couple videos back, we picked this thing up very last minute, and uh, we were able to score it, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous, but it has been sitting since 2007 because uh, it stopped running. So we really haven't even worked on it yet, the only thing we did is try and pull out the battery and see if it will charge which it didn't, the die hard, well, died. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is get a new battery unit and try and get some electrical life through this thing to even hear if we can cr even crank it. The owner that I just bought it from said, uh, you know, before he came, he hooked up a brand new battery to it via jumper cables, and when he went to turn the key, he heard like a pop noise, and then that was it, which is a little bit alarming. Anything really could have happened. So that does make me a little bit nervous, but I'm hoping that maybe it was just a bad battery connection that made it lose all <laughs> electrical power but once we do get this thing to crank then I'm just gonna go ahead and you know go through the engine uh, make sure that all the fluids are good before you know we really crank it out which is something I could do now but you know check for spark I'm basically really believing that it is either the carburetors or the fuel pump I'm not sure what kind of fuel pump this thing has I don't see a mechanical one anywhere that looks dry I don't know if it has gas because I can't turn the key to see if the gauge moves up and I'm sure the gas is really old in it anyway. But what I really love to do is get old stuff like this running. So I think we're going to be able to do it as long as it's nothing too crazy. But what I just want to do real quick is uh, just check the oil quick, make sure it doesn't look like a milkshake. And if it doesn't have any oil, then I'll probably pick up some to pour in when or if we get this thing to crank over. And so hopefully this thing's got... Whoa, that's a weird dipstick. Oh, it looks like it has a lot of oil. All right, so it does have oil. So it does have oil, and it was a little bit above the uh, maximum line, but that's probably due to because everything that's usually on, like, the cylinder walls and just, you know, all around the engine has probably sunk all to the bottom. So once this thing is cranking, I'm sure it'll go down a little bit to the ideal uh, height. But now that we know that, I just want to go run to AutoZone right now and uh, just go pick up a battery real quick, pop it in, and then hopefully we'll have uh, electrical power so we can really get wrenching on this thing. So let's get going. AutoZone didn't have anything uh, that would work, so I'm just gonna call around and then hopefully find a place that has these batteries. Alrighty guys, so we were actually back here the next day and you guys last left off uh, with me trying to find the battery. I called all over and there was one battery that they said would fit, but it was like over an hour away. And I was gonna drive there today, but they were closed today because today is Sunday. So then I did some research online and started to see that these cars sometimes came, well originally came, with two 6 volt batteries, but then they would be uh, usually swapped to just one 12 volt battery. Typically the older ones have the two 6 volt batteries, but I was doing some research and was seeing what kind of 12 volt batteries people put in their cars, and people were saying uh, 26R, which is what I got. So this should definitely fit. It is a hair smaller than the one that was in it, and I'm pretty sure that the one that was in it was too big for this car anyway, both physically and power-wise. So this should definitely be maybe a little bit safer for it. But I just want to jump straight into this. I want to throw this battery in there and see what happens. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that there will be any type of electrical life in it. But yeah, let's just see what happens. Oh, okay. It's a little weird that the battery cutoff switch is on the positive terminal usually it's supposed to be on the negative terminal and yes this is the positive and which i was reading online and apparently that's how they used to do it back in the day on these cars which is really weird and you guys are probably wondering why i'm wearing gloves it's just because really i don't know <laughs> the electrical situation with this car so really anything could happen i also have safety glasses on because you really just gotta treat batteries like bombs to be completely honest and especially on a car that I don't know what will happen. Can't be too safe. All right, here we go. Just snug them up quick. Sniff around for any burning smells that I might pick up. 
Oh my god, the alarm's going off. What the freak? Alright, let me take that off. Now the alarm might go off again. Alright, we're all connected. Let's see what happens. Alright, so under the hood, none of this wire is on fire yet, so that's good. But I do want to take the key and, uh, well, put in the ignition and see what happens. Alright, key is in. Right, let's turn it. All right, nothing. I got no power in it. I'm gonna try and hit the alarm. Nothing here either. So I think we might have a dirty connection over there. So what I'm gonna do is just try and clean them up. Being that we know we just had power in it just now when the alarm was going off. Yeah, no horn. <laughs> and then I'll try again. Uh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I just ripped off a little piece of sandpaper from like the rolls I have from painting the Corvette. It could also be the ground on the like, body itself, so. If this doesn't work, then I'll probably end up cleaning that as well. I have a feeling it's the positive cable, though. Okay, yep, there it goes. Huh. Alright, so it was a bad connection. So I just gotta tighten up my ground now, and then we should be good. Oh, good. Alright, so now I wanna hop back in. We should hopefully have power on the dash. All right, we do. I hear the fuel pump kick on. I don't see that it has any fuel, so I'm gonna cut it off there because I don't want to burn it out. With this fuel pump, it's like an old, let me see if the horn works. Maybe with the key, let's be honest. I don't know, we'll, we'll deal with that. But uh, if you guys can hear, it's like da 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 That's the fuel pump. And when fuel gets in it, then it will slow down and go da 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 It's like an old Ferrari, almost. You usually have to sit there for a while and let it do it if it hasn't ran for a while. But being that I turn the key and no fuel comes on, and the fuel level doesn't go up, either the fuel gauge is bad or there's actually no fuel in it. But I do want to try and just crank it quick. Just real quick, we know that it has oil in it. Alright, cool. So it does crank. Awesome. Looked like we did have a tack signal there, which is great. So what I want to do is pull out the spark plugs and just check them out. And then while I'm there, I just want to lube up the cylinders. Being that there's probably no oil in there. When I just cranked it out, it didn't sound too, you know, stuck or anything like that, so that's good. But it definitely just can't hurt to just spray a little lube in there and just get it all, you know, lubed up and moving a little bit better. And then while I have the spark plugs off, I might test for a spark. And from there, I'll probably end up uh, probably just putting some fuel in it and seeing if the fuel gauge moves. And if it does, then I'll check the fuel filter to see if we could get some fuel in it. And then we'll just try and fire it up. I have a feeling that we might have to mess with the carbs, but we'll just cross that bridge once we get there. As I was just walking up, I just saw that the uh, headlights are on. They don't look that great, which he said that the headlights are really bad, but let me go ahead and turn those off, and hopefully they don't get stuck on. Okay, they are in fact off, so that's good. <laughs> hmm. All right, so here is the, the first plug, uh, close up first. Definitely running a little bit rich, that's for sure. But it doesn't look like damaged in any way like that. You know, it's not smashed in like that. But let me take out the rest and then see if the rest uh, tell the same story. All right, so all the spark plugs are out and they are a little bit iffy. So this is the one you guys saw already right here. And moving on from here down, this is the next one. So as you can see, there is definitely a uh, good bit of rust all around that thing, which first made me a little bit nervous about possible like moisture in the cylinder from possibly a blown head gasket. But let me show you the rest. This is the next one, similar you know look as the one previous. Definitely has a good bit of rust around there, but the spark plug itself doesn't look damaged. And then this is the last one, and I'm not sure if you guys can be able to see it, but there is some type of like green glue between the uh, little gap. You guys might be able to see it. It's almost like a antifreeze green color, which definitely made me nervous if this thing had a possible blown head gasket. 
you know, clean threads, clean threads, clean threads. And then this one, this one I thought I was going to strip when it was coming out because it was coming out really, really rough. So when I just uh, sprayed WD-40 in all of the cylinders, uh, I definitely made sure to get on the threads as well to try and get those, you know, a little... Uh, looser. So I'm, I'm probably am going to throw a fresh set of plugs in these, but I am going to test for spark because I'm sure these will still uh, give out spark. But before I crank it, I do want to let the WD-40 settle in there for a little while, and then I'll probably just spray it again in just a little bit. But I do want to go ahead and open up this cap and see what we got. So, so there you can probably see a little bit. Doesn't look too bad in there though. Like I don't see rust really. Just looks a little bit dirty. So I'm probably am gonna have to get some antifreeze as well to uh, top it off. But I do want to see if this thing will fire first before I go ahead and, you know, spend more money in it than I really need to. So while the WD-40 is doing its thing inside the cylinders, I do want to uh, look over here at the brake and clutch master cylinder. So this clutch is hydraulic, and right now it's as light as a feather, but I haven't pumped it with the cap off or anything yet. I just really only put it down to see, you know, if I felt anything, which, I mean, you could breathe on it and it'll go down. This thing probably is empty. Yeah, which it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's empty as well. So these both call for uh, dot three, and luckily I do have a full bottle right here, so I do want to go ahead and uh, top off both of these and, and just try and pump them up and see if hopefully I could get some pressure out of them. I'm really hoping that there's not any leaks or anything like that, or that any lines are blown or nothing like that. That would really suck. But that's what a project car is about. All right, this should be fun. I'm trying to dump it into the clutch reservoir. We'll start there. All right, so I am gonna look under the car already and just see if I see anything dripping, which I don't. But that'll probably end up happening once it builds pressure. Okay. do this a couple times and now I'm just gonna check the reservoir again because if the lines are empty the fluid's gonna drop down a pretty good amount and we don't want to get air into the system right, so it actually didn't look like I went down too much but I'm just gonna keep pumping it and see what happens so guys literally like 30 45 minutes later of literally just pumping up the pedal and checking the fluid I now have a uh, clutch pedal there. There is pressure and it feels pretty dang good. It doesn't seem to be uh, drinking down any more fluid, so this might be it. And the brakes, they do build up relatively quick. Like right now, they just faded away, but if I just go like this, then they're back. So I'm not really sure. That might just be because it's not running and uh, like it does have a brake booster. So I'll just have to see about the brakes once it is running. But now that we have a clutch and maybe brakes, I'm not sure yet, then I do want to run to AutoZone to pick up spark plugs and then the gas station and fill up a couple jerry cans and fill this thing up. Well, not fill it up, but put some gas in there, see if the gas gauge moves, and then watch the fuel filter up there, which is pretty clean for any uh, fuel that starts coming its way. So like I said before, I'm just gonna test for spark really quick with just one of these. I'm just gonna have my dad inside of the car crank it, and I'm just gonna go to each uh, little coil wire and just ground it out and then make sure we are all good to go. Now I'm just gonna throw a uh, paper towel across here so all the WD-40 doesn't shoot over the paint and everything like that. All right, go ahead. All right. Had a really good spark in that one. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All good. All right, so now I'm just running to uh, AutoZone. Just gonna pick up the spark plugs real quick and I'll catch you guys back once I have them. Spark plugs are acquired. I'll head back. Spark plugs in. I do want to go ahead and uh, put some fuel in this thing. Oh, that doesn't seem right. I got about seven gallons for it. Ooh, that's kind of steep. So that should definitely be enough to uh, get a reading on the fuel gauge. I might just do this two and a half for right now and then hold off on the five gallon that I have right down here. Just in case we have to like pull the tank or anything like that, hopefully not, then it won't be as full of fuel. Just check the leaks quick. Oh God, there is a leak. Oh no. There is a fuel leak. Good thing I checked. Dang. All right, so I have a bucket underneath the gas tank right now, but while there is fuel in it, I do want to take advantage of it before it all leaks out and see.
Dang, nothing. But as you guys can see, it was uh, starting to leak. Hopefully it doesn't overfill that bucket. I don't think it will, but it is definitely going pretty good. Dang, that sucks. I wasn't really hoping to do a fuel tank on this. Well, at least it won't be full. Alright, so that really does uh, suck, but it is what it is. Once that's done draining, I do want to see if I can find the hole at all. Or maybe it's even a drain plug, I really don't know, but I can't take the bucket away because it's still, you know, pouring out. But while it's doing that, I do just want to try and just spray some, like, starter fluid into the intakes and see if I can even hear this thing fire. Just so I know that I'm not going to be putting in a brand new gas tank for something that might be blown up or won't even fire. Just want to hear it fire, and if I hear that, then I feel pretty confident with this engine. I could do a compression test and all that, but I just want to see and hear if this thing will come to life for a second. That's good enough for me. It literally just ran for like a, a good bit, considering I didn't spray a lot of it in. Oh wow, and the fuel pump is working. It does actually, it is starting to pull fuel. So guys, this thing just ran, and after looking at the footage, there definitely was a little bit of a knocking noise. I'm just gonna ignore that, to be completely honest. I doubt it has rod knock. Could just be because the oil pressure wasn't really building and it fired up relatively quick. So I'm definitely not going to try and start it again, but that is really good to know and that the fuel pump is in fact working and uh, is actually starting to pull fuel all the way up here so I don't know if you guys are really going to be able to see yeah just right there on the side you can see it splashing around before it's completely bone dry now it's not but I'm pretty sure that it is still oh yeah it's still going jeez she was alive so now I just gotta wait forever for this thing to stop leaking and then I can inspect it and see how I should go about fixing it. So I was just looking over the uh, whole entire car to look for any leaks and I found one right here up front and I see it kind of leaking down off the steering which is weird. It's a very weird spot. There's no cool in it. There's no fuel lines that run to the front over there. That is really weird. Oh yeah that is gas. Jeez. Ooh maybe the carbs are leaking. Could that be it? Oh looks like it might be. Oh yeah. So after looking through everything, I was able to figure out how it was making its way to up front there. So if you guys can see right there, that little bar that's for the steering, it is directly underneath the carbs and both of them are leaking. So basically it was just going onto that bar, running down and then landing right there. And I need to put down some speedy dry. So while I'm waiting for time to pass while that is continuing to drain, I know that the headlights work, but now let's see if the hazards work. Okay, that's all working. That works. Okay, we got one tail light, another tail light, boom, and boom. Dang, they all work. So guys, we actually uh, left off a couple days ago, like two days ago, because this gas tank was still draining. It was such a slow leak, but it was enough that, you know, it's obviously a problem. But it's obviously done draining now, and I just kind of just scraped away at the paint with the screwdriver because it was all bubbled up from the fuel and the metal underneath there is actually really really clean so I'm actually pretty surprised but I cannot find a hole anywhere so what I'm going to do about that is right over here I have a just a, a bucket of water and honestly what I'm just going to do is just put a little bit in there and just watch for the leak and try and find it and if it's small enough I think I am just going to if it's like a little pinhole thing I think I'm just going to throw a weld on there which is sketchy because it's obviously a gas tank but if I clean it out enough and like keep it a little ventilated for a while, I think we should be fine. But I will have a fire extinguisher and like the hose on hand. That's gotta be like a pinhole thing. Oh, yep, I feel it with the screwdriver. Wow, that is tiny. That's gotta be from like a, like a little rock or something because there is like no rust on the bottom of here. I know that might look like rust on the outside, but that's just like dirt caked up. So I'm gonna try and mark that. The screwdriver, just kind of circle it. So what I'm gonna do is just let this all drip out. And then I'm just gonna make sure I can still see it after it is dripping. And I might just pour a little bit of a soapy water mix in there just to try and clean it up as good as I can. Because I obviously don't want this thing exploding on me. 
So I think I am going to do that, but in the meantime, I do actually want to start taking off the carburetors and start looking into them, uh, you know, take them apart and see how dirty they are and if I should get a rebuild kit for them or if they just need to be cleaned. So let me just put some soapy water in here real quick and then we'll go under the hood and start wrenching. I got my tools ready to go to uh, start taking off these carburetors. So with that being said, let's get to work. So guys, as you can see, the carburetors are now off and unfortunately I lost all of my footage of me taking them off because my memory card went full. But uh, I just got them sitting down there. Pretty bummed that I lost the footage, but it was pretty easy. I just took off the cables and the throttle cable was really weird. It was just kind of just wrapped around it, which is kind of odd. But then the choke cable, real easy. Then you just disconnect the fuel line, the overflow lines, little like vacuum lines up here and then just two bolts on each side and then they're done. And then along with the intakes, which are just two bolts on each of them also, so super simple. I am gonna have to get new gaskets for these anyway, so I probably will end up ordering a rebuild kit. But what I do wanna do is uh, take off the uh, you know little float bowls on these and see how dirty it is in there. And in the meantime, if I am waiting for a rebuild kit, I could maybe soak these in like a gallon of purple power or something to uh, really clean them out. Let's go ahead and do that now and see what we can find. Definitely smells like old fuel. Oh yeah. That could definitely be a reason why it wasn't running. That thing is filthy. So here is a uh, closer look inside. It is absolutely caked on the bottom there with corrosion. The float seems to be moving, so at least that's not seized up. Let's take off the other one and uh, see if it looks the same. It should. Oh yep, yeah. pretty much the same. The needle is moving freely though on both of them, so that's good. I know I'm definitely gonna need uh, some float bowl seals because they were like leaking out the sides, which did make me think maybe a stuck float, but they do seem to be moving pretty good. Wow, that is bad. So I did just find a uh, rebuild kit for both of these for a pretty good price, and it comes with everything I need, the seals, uh, you know, all new internal parts, which I mean, I don't think I'd really even need, but I am going to put them in anyway. So I am going to go ahead and get that ordered so it could get here as soon as possible because I think this is why it's not running. Along with the hole in the gas tank and the spark plugs were pretty shot as well. But everything we found so far, definitely uh, once they're all good to go, I think would definitely uh, make it run. So I still have the gas tank draining out right now and I do want to flush it out a couple times because I do want to get as much like fuel out of it as possible before I weld it. There's really no rush because I do have to wait for that to, uh, you know, the parts for those to arrive anyway. So there's no really need to rush it and risk, you know, blowing up the entire car. So I am going to be ending off this video here. And next video, we're going to be rebuilding these carburetors, you know, cleaning them up, uh, doing the gas tank, putting everything all back together, and hopefully doing the first start on it. So guys, with that being said, follow my social medias. They will be on the outro of this video, Instagram and Snapchat. I use the most, but thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment. Tell your friends about the channel.